Hi, Captain Steve from Boat Test Reports. Thanks for being with us. We have some surprising news from Yamaha Motors, as well as some new boats, seamanship lessons, and part three of our interview with Thierry Yacht's founder, Leon Slickers. Today, Leon explains why boats have gotten so expensive. This week's show is sponsored by Sea Ray Boats, which is celebrating 61 years in the business. The big news this week comes from Otaro Canal, Hokkaido, Japan, where last week Yamaha Motors Sea trialed the prototype of a twin electric motor unit that it calls Harmo, short for the Next Generation Control System Platform, which has twin self-contained electric motors with applications for canal and river boats that need maximum maneuverability, but not speed. The joystick drive system controls the lower units, which can be swung 180 degrees from port to starboard. The four-blade prop is connected to the rim of the motor and is essentially the armature of a motor ringed by a permanent magnet stator. Boats they propel can easily go sideways, make U-turns, and the lower units will rise to be nearly horizontal out of the water. But that's just the beginning, as Yamaha Motors is working on a compact 47-horsepower electric motor for motorcycles and has developed a lightweight, world-class, high-density, 179-horsepower motor that produces over 358 horsepower with two motors seen here. With all-wheel drive, that means 536 horsepower in automobiles, so can marine motors be far behind? The positive vibes coming from the recreational boating industry continued in July, with boat registration soaring 44% compared to the same time last year. All categories were up 25.2% year over year. Registrations of runabouts rose 67.7% compared to last year, which is a reversal of a trend that has gone for 15 years. Ski and wake sports boats jumped 73% year over year for July and were up 11.6% year to date. Pontoons also had a strong month with a 53.3% increase in registrations year-over-year year and 8.3% year-to-date. In Fort Myers, Florida, Gulfstar finished the installation of the recreational boating industry's first fully automated dry stack storage system in the United States that eliminates the forklift and can handle bigger boats than before. The estimated cost was $20 million and the facility was designed to withstand winds up to 200 miles per hour. The heart of the system? is automated storage and retrieval technology that uses a series of shuttles, tracks, and an electric crane on rails to launch and retrieve a boat up to 40 feet long and in less than seven minutes. The system can even perform specific tasks like filling a cooler with ice. Following suit, F3 Marina in Fort Lauderdale is building an automated facility that can handle boats up to 46 feet long and hopes to have it online by year's end. Taking a look at new products, Raymarine has updated its Axiom line of multifunction displays with the Axiom Plus. The new technology is available in 7, 9, and 12-inch displays and comes with a quad-core processor and a GPS GNSS receiver that offers four times improvement in sensitivity. Every mariner should know the proper technique for tying two half hitches because they have so many applications. Here's the secret behind getting it right. Two half hitches will secure a line to a piling. Go around the piling, under and down, under and down, and there are two half hitches right there. Now the beauty of this knot is it makes a bit of a slip knot. Once it gets tight, it stays tight. Okay, ready? We go around the piling, go under and down, and again, under and down. And there are your two half hitches. And also, two half hitches do not make a whole hitch. We're coming into the fall season, which many anglers feel is one of the best times of the year to be on the water, with fewer boats and cooler temperatures. Bass are hunting for schooling bait fish and getting ready for winter. Let's take a closer look at the Ranger Z519 bass boat. Starting at the bow, Ranger offers a choice of trolling motors with 80 pounds or 112 pounds of thrust. Both have a foot control and a recessed tray just ahead. In the center of the bow is a panel for mounting a fish finder and alongside are switches for the outboard trim, lights, and live well. The forward casting deck measures 59 by 79 inches and has a pedestal mounted seat. There are four storage lockers in the deck. The dash has space for a multifunction display up to 15 inches and analog gauges are on each side of the steering wheel. 
Turn signal style trim controls let the driver raise and lower the motor and adjust the trim without taking his hands off the wheel and to the right are the shift throttle lever with accessory switches just ahead. The drivers and observer seats are thickly padded and adjust fore and aft. The aft deck measures 42 inches deep and 83 inches wide and has a removable fishing seat. Beneath the center hatch in the aft deck is the aerated live well that divides and recirculates. Just aft is access to the batteries and charger. On the water, the Z519 hits 70.1 miles per hour at 6350 RPM. Best cruise came in at 4000 RPM where we recorded 4.2 miles per gallon giving her a range of 163 miles. Check out the full review of the Z519 at Botest.com. In this third and final segment of our interview with Leon Slickers, he looks back on his 75 years in the boat business and explains the sea changes that have swept the sport, as well as explaining why boats have gotten so expensive. Boats have gotten very expensive over the years. And the price increase in the last 20 years has gotten, uh, it's far outstripped the rate of inflation and far outstripped what uh, the average person is bringing home household income. What accounts for this, this increase in pricing? Today, it's amazing what all people want on their boat. They want a television in every space, and it's gyros and high-tech navigation systems and autopilots and joysticks and all of that. Looking through some of my old history books of slick crab days, and Man, I, you know, I look at some of those boats and they were relatively very simple. But today you stop and think of the, the complexity of them. Today they want uh, diving doors, terraces that all sides fold out, and push button. Everything has to be push button. All of that costs money. Joystick is about 20 grand at least. Gyros are between 50 and 100 grand. Painted hulls are, you know, like 15 grand. You can rack up over a hundred grand just like that. Now you add the horsepower and you can add another 25 or 30 grand by horsepower and speed. There's a lot of options, but people seem to like to go fast. And they like, they like nice product. We don't have the advantage of building the, the amount of boats that we used to. Uh, you know, think of our industry. Uh, and for, for us, even, we're not building the amount of boats we used to. Are the boat companies forcing that, or are the consumers demanding it? You know, when you've got a bunch of options and you think, well, you know, they want to buy that and they want to buy that, but we'll offer it, and they, they all take it. I mean, it's amazing. They used to be happy with just yellow coat colors. We now paint them with an Emron. It's a lot more expensive. It's better, don't get me wrong. Uh, the painted hull is far superior out there than the gel coat. They'll last for years and years without having to, and still look good. Your two companies that you had for many of the last 20 years, Tierra and Pursuit, they were high-end premium companies. So right. you right. targeted and positioned your boats at the top of the market. I always have, Jeff, right from the very beginning, uh, even at Sitcraft, I always put more into it, the detail, and use the very best material that I could put on the boat, stainless teak and the best resins and gel coats. I always used what I thought was the best. Is there more profit in that higher niche than in a, a lower niche that might sell more units? I don't think so. <laughs> it's just the way that I think I'm wired. I like to produce something that I'm proud of, and I have a passion for what I build, and I want to build something nice. I often said that I, I, I wanted to be the best, not, not the biggest. A recent trend, uh, and it's one that's making boats more expensive, is towards um, outboard power. I think they feel that if there's something wrong with the engine, we can unbolt it and we can put a new engine or a different engine on it or something like that. Um, I think it works well for day boating. The inboard business will still be there for the cruising. You follow me? Yes. The guy that's gonna go on a cruise. But there's less of that today. Uh, less cruising and there's more day boating. Speed is the most expensive option on a boat.
Yes. Okay. Yes. And what and what do they want to do? They want to continually keep going faster and faster. And if that's what they want, then all right. But it is a very expensive option. You can save a lot of money if you're happy if you want to go ten miles slower. We're on the expensive side. But on the big picture, I feel we offer a lot of value and the resale value of our product is good. And in the long term, I don't think a customer pays any more to boat in our boat than it does a cheaper boat. As you look back over your uh, uh, 77 years, what do you think were the, the watershed changes, uh, the, the sea changes that affected boating? Going from wood to fiberglass was a huge watershed moment. And I think another big one, it was going to four stroke. All of a sudden, the engines became quieter, smoother, less smoke. And I think the customers accepted them a lot more than the old two stroke. And so the outboard market all of a sudden uh, took off. If you, if you make a spot in the, in the line of the sand, when they introduced four strokes of any Mamon, their outboard, their market, boy, it just went big time. Now they're getting a, a second wave. Yes. <laughs> and and yes. why is that? Why are they increasing in popularity so much right now? They want a little more speed. They want the flexibility of an outboard. They can beach it. They can take it out of the water. You know what I mean? There's yes. a lot of things that an outboard can do were an inboard. I think the other fear would be maintenance. There's a tendency to believe that the bilge work um, is more expensive and that there is less people able to do that today. I don't think there's the mechanics, the boat mechanics that, that there used to be. And it's getting rather expensive. I want to thank you very much for your insights and and uh, encouragement. I must say, I think about you bicycling 30 miles a day all the time. <laughs> and uh, so I, I wish you good health and thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, well, Jeff, it's been good talking to you and good seeing you. Thank you, bye-bye. All right, bye. Now let's take a break for this week's sponsor, Sea Ray Boats, and take a look at some of the reasons why we all love boating. The time we spend on the water is a different kind of time. It bends the rules. It flows more freely. It feels more vast, more important. Maybe that's because it's time spent doing the things we love with the people we love. It's a time without compromises, because compromises are for land. A time you feel exhilarated, even when you're anchored. A time when the middle of nowhere is nowhere else you'd rather be. At Sea Ray, we know how to make the most of this time. From the touches of fine craftsmanship that help you lose touch with reality, to innovations that make your experiences more effortless, to service that keeps you out there living in the moment. We know that richer moments on the water lead to a richer life. That's why everything we do is designed to make each moment exceptional. Sea Ray, every moment perfectly crafted. Let's take a look at a question from the captain's exam. A power-driven vessel when leaving a dock or berth is required to sound four short blasts, one long blast, one prolonged blast, or no signal is required. Well, the correct answer is C, one prolonged blast. And if backing, it should be followed by three short blasts. Now, did you say B, one long blast? That's incorrect, as there's no official definition of a long blast in the regs, only a prolonged blast. Well, that's our show for this week. As always, thanks for watching. Keep those questions, pictures, and videos coming. And remember to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and for all the latest news and up-to-date tests, visit BoatTest.com. Stay safe, happy boating, and I'll see you on the water.